Hi there, and welcome to Bournemouth University's Masters in Cybersecurity and Human Factors. I am Duncan Kieris, the current program leader for the course, and today I will be providing a short overview about the MSc and Cybersecurity and Human Factors. If you would like to find out more information about how to apply or to download a prospectus, then do head on over to the Bournemouth University website and have a look under Study, Courses, MSc Cybersecurity and Human Factors. There you'll be able to find a range of information. However, today let's take a look at some of those highlights, some of the things that as a student you can be expecting to learn and to develop as you go along when you do the MSc in Cybersecurity and Human Factors. So for example, you will gain a range of skills, know-how and ability, certainly when it comes to understanding about security, risks and human factors. It's actually the human factors which is very important because people are very central to many of these activities. Certainly when it comes to understanding security and risks and therefore people, it's useful to understand how they act and interact and also how they think. This is also useful towards reducing risks. So with a combination of these technical and non-technical skills in different contexts this will provide the foundation for the course as students go along. As they go along the aim is to develop them to have a well a critical lot of things so critical analysis, critical evaluation and a deep understanding of many methods and practices that are used across the industry. As we've mentioned, there are a number of technical skills and know-how that can be learned. And this is also applicable to many other industries, whether this would be different organisations, government or critical infrastructure. So throughout the course, students will gain a, a good, broad understanding of many of these concepts. And this will be applied through assessments. So when it comes to assessments, and projects, understanding how to apply certain research methodologies, methods and techniques will also become quite important, along with things like time management, project planning, experimentation, design, and back to this critical analysis and evaluation again, to demonstrate a deep understanding of the subject areas. So when it comes to the subject areas, there are four key units, which is cybersecurity, human factors, cyberpsychology, and research methods and professional issues. Students can then also choose two optional units. These are accessibility and assistive technologies, blockchain and digital futures, enterprise digital forensics, or EDF as we call it, psychology of software and development, Security by Design, or SPD, and Security Information and Event Management, or SEAM as we call it. Once students have completed all of their units over semester one or semester two, that's assuming they're full time, then they are able to progress to stage two, which is to complete an individual master's project. There is also an option of a placement in between stage 1 and stage 2. I will come back to that in a little while. Let's take a look at some key information. So, the computing department and activities is held on the main campus at Bournemouth University, which is Tilbrook Campus. And there are two intake dates for the MSc in Cybersecurity and Human Factors. In semester one, starting in September, or in semester two, starting in January. There also are options to take the course either full-time or part-time. So, for example, if you were to start full-time in September, in semester one, you could progress through the course for 12 months without taking a placement or 24 months 
with the optional 30 week placement. Or if you started in January full time, it's likely this would take 18 months without a placement or 30 months with a week 30 week placement. Now this difference is also because of the summer holidays um, so the timeline is slightly different. But in both cases, if students wish to partake the course part-time, this can be taken from anywhere between 18 to 36 months. We do also have entry requirements for the course. So the general entry requirements are a bachelor's or undergraduate honours degree with a 2-2. Now we do say any subject, however most of our students seem to come from computing backgrounds or psychology backgrounds, but there are others as well that are coming from business backgrounds too. So it really is quite open, as long as you can demonstrate that you have the, a good understanding of how organisations work, maybe at a basic level of security or even psychology, it's really understanding a good combination of this mixture but more importantly how you can grow and learn from this. We also have international student entry requirements. Now these might differ from uh, country to country or, or certainly the equivalent of a undergraduate degree might be different in different countries. So do have a look at the Bournemouth University website, look under study, international and be you your country to find out more information specific to your country and the entry requirements. Furthermore, um, if English is not your first language, then you will need to provide some sort of evidence to show that you have achieved a level of English language which would be suitable for the university and the activities related to it. Again, you can find out more information in the international section on the Bournemouth University website about this. So, why would you choose BU? Well, actually, there are lots of reasons why you might not want to come to Bournemouth. But let's stick with it, this course in particular, or let's start with this. Because I want to start with Michael's quote here. Now, I know Michael. He's actually a lovely person. And what's interesting is, is Michael was, uh, or is, somebody who has actually got a lot of experience in information assurance, governance, security, risk. And this can be in uh, the more of a national level, government level, organisations, or even in a design context. Simply Michael already has a lot of experience uh, out there in, in, in the in industry or the organisational world. So where his quote there says the critical blend of topics that span from the boardroom through operations try through to operations has delivered real value actually really it's what's the, the key thing there is that Michael has experience of many boardrooms so for him to very kindly let, let us use his quote really does demonstrate that the type of skills the type of know-how the type of ability of how to apply these skills is something that you can really take away from partaking in the Masters of Cybersecurity and Human Factors. So this is a really important feature. However, what really makes it, certainly at Bournemouth University, is you, the students. It's the students that bring the vibrant atmosphere and the, the diverse and multicultural environment. And it is really useful, certainly from a security point of view, so risk and human factors, to understand these different perspectives both nationally, internationally and at many different levels. So it's this, it's this coming together that really makes it fun at BU. And at Bournemouth University we have offered uh, many years uh, worth of courses and we do have a lot of experience in this area but I think what is really positive is employees agree that actually they really do have a high esteem and recognition for our students. So this is one of many reasons of why coming to BU in Bournemouth is a great reason. But if there was ever a really good reason, we really do have great beaches. So on a sunny day, there's plenty to do, plenty to see, lots of places to go, 
or you can just hang out at the beach and it really is a, a great idea so let's get back to the course as I mentioned during the course there is an opportunity to have a placement so this is optional so for full-time students um, this um, could be a good option maybe for part-time students it's less beneficial because perhaps part-time students are already working and therefore already have some kind of industry experience perhaps related industry experience as well but certainly for full-time students um, either starting in September or January once all of the units have been completed so that would be considered as stage one students are then able to progress on to stage two or take a placement first now there are many benefits of, of taking a placement um, certainly with regards to applying some of these skills in, in a real world scenario and understanding how organizations have to operate with different regulations and laws uh, different guidelines different security standards when you actually apply these things firsthand this can be really beneficial but working with a placement company can also help you in some cases towards your project either from that understanding of how to apply theory and practice or perhaps in some cases the company might have a project that they would like you to solve or certainly a problem that they would like you to solve and as part of your project your master's uh, individual project that could be your focus so there are opportunities there uh, for placements so if that's something that's of interest to you have a look also what might be of interest are career opportunities I would be honest actually I've been asked this question uh, many times from, from many different people and certainly there are different examples of uh, typical roles that uh, would be likely from uh, performing an MSc cybersecurity and human factors so for example you could maybe go on to be a security designer cyber psychologist digital forensics investigator incident manager intrusion detector security analyst hey and maybe even go on to do a PhD but the question is is well what could I do and that is really the important bit what could you do you or all of us we're all different in many ways so if you're the type of person that enjoys programming enjoys using Linux computers and working in command line then perhaps roles such as digital forensic investigator or even a penetration tester these could be suitable roles if however you're not the sort of person that gets excited by Linux command lines maybe you have different analytical skills or different ways of applying it maybe creative, creatively then perhaps more the design area is for you or even the psychological area so there are different roles that would be suited to different people so really it's a question for yourself so when you think about career opportunities what is it that you would like to do what are some of those strengths and weaknesses that you have Indeed, throughout your MSc at Cybersecurity and Human Factors, you can build on some of those weaknesses and build on those strengths too. But where is it that you see yourself? Where do you want to go? What are the skills that you feel that you can apply, either now or in the future? Because maybe this is just, just part of a, a step, part of your journey. Maybe actually you would like to see yourself in another role, but you need to start somewhere. So think about where is it that you would like to go because then that can also help inform what units you might like to do. So as mentioned there are four mandatory units and six optional units. You can choose two of those options. Some of those options are likely to be more technical or some of them may be more design orientated. So do have a think about what is going to be suitable for you certainly when it comes to choosing those options thinking about some of those things can then perhaps answer your own question of well, what are the 
the career options. And don't forget, this isn't just career opportunities in this country, this could be worldwide. Certainly as a PhD candidate, if you would like to go on to do more research, um, either at universities or even research facilities, this is also something that could be a worldwide opportunity. So do think beyond just these roles. Think about where you could progress to through these roles. Always aim a little bit higher. Certainly at BU, that's what we try to do. There are actually many things that we try to do at BU, but a lot of it, we really do do it for you. So whatever you bring, whatever you like, whoever you are, whatever you do, where you belong, is hopefully where you can be you and be you. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening.